In this short video, we're going to so solve another set of differential equations. They have to be linear equations. So remember, a first order linear equation can be written in this form, where all of the coefficients at most depend on the independent variable x, and the rest of the terms are nonlinear. So if we divide through by the coefficient on dy by dx, we get a, an equation that looks like dy dx plus p of xy equals f of x. And this is what we call standard form. And we'll use this standard form to find a solution on an interval i where both p of x and f of x are continuous. So if we look at the left-hand side of this equation, it reminds us of the product rule. It's something times y prime plus something else times y. But it's not the product rule as it's written, right? We would need to have um, a condition that can't be met here. But the idea here is to say, Let's look for a function mu of x, where if I were to multiply the entire equation and, and both terms on the left-hand side uh, by this new function, we'd like that to be the outcome of the product rule. So bear with me here. So we're adding, taking a new function. We're going to multiply it through on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side. And then we get to choose or define this function in such a way so that these two terms are actually two terms that would come from applying the product rule to y times some other function. Once we've done that, we should be able to solve uh, this equation by just integrating both sides. So let's see if we can find this function mu of x. So again, we want this, these two terms to be the outcome of a product rule. In other words, all right, sure, we want the first term, we have y derivative, so y prime, no derivative on mu of x. Here we have no derivative on y, and then we have this product right here. So obviously the function can't be mu of x, but maybe we can determine what mu of x should be from that condition. So in other words, we want this left-hand side to equal mu of x times y prime plus mu prime times y. Well, in order for that to be true, the first terms already line up perfectly. It's the second term which doesn't line up because here we have just mu prime, and here we have mu of x times p of x. Well, if we want this to be a true statement, then we have to set those equal to each other. Mu prime must equal mu of x times p of x. Well, if I divide through by mu of x, that would say that the quotient mu prime of x over mu of x would equal p of x. If I integrate both sides with respect to x, here I can make a u substitution. If I just made the u substitution that uh, u, u equals mu of x, then du would be mu prime of x dx, and 
here I would have the integral of du over u. So let's go ahead and work out those integrals. Can't work out the integral of p of x d of x, but with that u substitution, the integral of u, mu prime over mu of x dx would be the natural log of the absolute value of mu of x. Again, I don't have a formula for p of x, so I just write that as an integral and plus some integration constant. And uh, that gives me that the absolute value of mu of x is going to be e to the power of the integral of p dx plus c1. And so using properties of exponents and replacing c1 then with c, uh, I will wind up with mu of x equals c e to the integral of p dx. And let me just fill in some of the missing steps here. So remember this would be e raised to the integral of p dx times e to the c1. And then to get rid of the absolute value signs, I'd have plus or minus here e to the c1, then plus or minus e to the c1 is what I replace with c. And since I'm just looking for one function, I don't need a parameter, a one parameter family of functions, I can just choose a, a value for c which is convenient, which in, in the most convenient value of c is c equals 1. So that's the function that I need to multiply on both sides. It's the uh, integrating factor. Now, almost everybody who sees this for the first time uh, says, wow, that is a very complicated function. It has, it's an exponential with an integral, but we don't put it all together at once. We first uh, evaluate the integral. Once we've evaluated the integral, we put that uh, outcome from the integral in the exponential. I think it'll be clearer once you see a few examples. So our procedure is we're going to first need to put our differential equation in standard form. So that means that the coefficient on the dy dx has to be equal to 1. Then you have the term multiply times y, and then what is whatever is left over. You'll identify p of x, then you'll perform the integration, and then finally you'll take whatever comes out of the integration into the exponent of e. So you're never going to write down e raised to the integral of p dx. Then you're going to multiply the right-hand side by this integrating factor, which you calculated in step two. You don't really need to do the, anything on the right-hand side because the way we derive the integrating factor ensures that the right-hand side, I'm sorry, the left-hand side, the left-hand side is the derivative of the product of y times the integrating factor. And why don't we write that out? Why don't we uh, write out both terms from the product rule? Because the next step is to integrate both sides and then solve for y. So why calculate the derivative and then uncalculate the derivative when we integrate? Because the integral of the derivative is just the target of the derivative. So we don't actually ever... Uh, take the derivative of these two. In fact, we replace the entire right-hand side by this type of expression so that when we integrate, there's nothing to do on the right-hand side. I'm sorry, left-hand side. All right, so let's look at an example. This is already written in standard form. 
So let's identify P. P is just the constant 5. So then I take the integral of P dx. That will just give me 5x. And so my integrating factor, so this 5x, this 5x goes into the exponent of e. That's my integrating factor. Now the left-hand side now will just be d by dx of y times e to the 5x, y times the integrating factor. And we'll multiply the integrating factor times the left-hand excuse me, right-hand side, and which gives, gives me 0. So now integrate both sides with respect to x. As I said, the integral here will just undo the d by dx. The antiderivative of 0 is just a constant. And so now I can solve for y. So uh, I divide both sides by e to the 5x. That's the same as multiplying by e to the negative 5x. And this will be valid on the entire real number line. Here's another example, still written in standard form. Now p of x is still 5. We to have the same integrating factor. The only thing that's different here is that now our right-hand side is the constant 2. So when I integrate, I have to find the antiderivative of 2 e to the 5x dx. And that will be uh, 2 fifths e to the 5x plus c. So now I'll have to divide every term by e to the 5x, or multiply every term by e to the negative 5x. In either case, the solution is y equals 2 fifths plus c raised to the power of negative 5x. And again, that's valid on the entire real line. The term here, c e to the negative 5x, is what we call a transient term. And the reason why it's transient is we're thinking about x representing time. And as uh, time increases, the impact of that term goes to zero. So any term, whether x represents time or not, any term which goes to zero as the independent variable goes to infinity can be referred to as a transient term. So on a given interval i, the one parameter family of solutions that we get by using this integrating factor is going to solve this equation. So this method always works. And unlike separation of variables where we might lose a constant solution, in this case, every solution to the differential equation belongs to this family. So we don't have to look for any missing solutions like we have to do when we're using a separation of variables. So let's take a look at another example here. Now we're going to, instead of just solving it, we're going to say we're going to find the general solution. General solution means that a one parameter family of solutions, which encompasses all possible solutions. But the technique doesn't change. We're still going to find p of x. We'll integrate p of x dx. In this case, that gives us negative 6x. That goes into the exp exponent of the exponential. And that gives us the integrating factor e raised to the power of negative 6x. So we write the right-hand side as d by dx of y times the integration integrating factor and multiply the left-hand, I'm sorry, the right-hand side as uh, by e to the negative 6x to get 3 e to the negative 6x. Now integrate both sides. And finally divide. So again, on the left hand side, we're really not doing any uh, calculations. We just know that the y times the integrating factor after the integration 
is going to be the left hand side. So we'll divide both sides by e to the negative six. That's the same as multiplying by e to the positive six. And we obtain our solution. In a follow up video, we'll do some more involved examples uh, on how we might be able to solve more complicated differential linear differential equations using this integrating factor.